Good morning. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to catch this or yesterday I was on so early and now I'm on a little bit later. But you know, that's the way life goes sometimes. Still was up for the sunrise. <sighs> but, um, oh, and just an update for those of you that were um, on yesterday or listened to that. Um, we had a big day, a big morning where my daughter um, was going to get her the ability to drive independently her restricted license and she did yay she got that that little sticker on her on her um on her license so a few more months of some restrictions and then she'll be fully unleashed um she's a good driver it's a very exciting day and let me show you here beautiful 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 uh, we've got quite a lovely cloudscape, and the sun is kind of hiding behind the clouds over there. And we're continuing on in the book of Matthew today. I got through um, chapters 8, 9, and 10, and I'm going to camp on 10 today. Um, chapters 8 and 9 are the miracles, Jesus' a, a description of a lot of the miracles that he did, and then even um, sending his 12 out to have the authority to do miracles. So, and then 10 is actually the mission. I'm titling today, On a Mission. He names the 12 apostles, which basically stands for those on a mission. Hence my, you know, honing in on that. And the, boy, I mean, I I really read and reread chapter 10. I think that is one that um, even if we committed it to memory, it'd be like, whew, there's a lot in there. Um, and this is Jesus's instructions and sort of what to expect when these folks are just basically going, yep, no longer this person. I am now an, an apostle. And this is what life is going to be like. This is their mission. And interestingly enough, the last few days, and I've talked about it in some different places, that the paradox of when you really want to be on a mission to be a new creation, even if it's a self-defined creation, you're one way over here and you've decided that you really want to, and you're not living in alignment, so the process of getting in alignment with what you truly want to be, walking your walk, from just walking, you know, talking the talk to walking the walk, that that is that's a mission and you've got to have a sense of like purpose and urgency to it but at the same time there's no like timeline of like okay we're going to go in and do this for 30 days and then you can go back to no this is an abandoning of i am no longer this way and i'm on my way over to being this way and we leave it and I don't think a lot of people understand that. They kind of really, they know they want to change, but they still think they can stay the same. And that's why we do so much in the psychology world. You do a lot of foundational work of really making sure people understand this concept so they don't have false expectations. And then when the go tough get going, um, no, when the going gets tough, the tough, the tough get going or not so tough get going you've got to know this is tough and this is exactly what Jesus lays out in chapter 10 like this is going to be hard what I'm asking you to do is going to be hard one of them says can I go uh, bury my father before I go nope let the dead bury the their dead like ouch if any one of you loves your mother daughter son brother any more than me you're not fit for this mission like this is some some stuff here 
And um, hence only a few, but the few that have their name in this book that have rippled out through time and changed the 12 people, 13 really, <laughs> changed the world, changed even how we date history. And he said, you are going to get flogged. You're going to get thrown in prison, beat. But hey, you know what? That's an opportunity to be in front of people of, the, of authority, <laughs> the rulers, the governors, the judges. And then when you're in front of them, you can talk about me and talk about this new way of God. Um, so <laughs> well, would you sign up for that? I don't like I'd be like, yeah, I really love you. I, I promise I do. But I think I'm stay over here <laughs> like this. He says, go and he said, and not only go out, but go out with no possessions, no money, no traveling bag, no change of clothes. You're going to go from town to town. Don't worry, you're working, so you deserve to be fed. You will be taken care of. But be as gentle as doves, but as shrewd as snakes. Like, go, receive the hospitality while you're in their houses. Do an evaluation. Bless the house when you go in. If these are good and worthy, righteous people that you've stayed in this house that have given you hospitality and they're genuine and they're on this mission, too, by supporting you, then that blessing will stand. If not, withdraw that blessing when you leave. Like this, like chapter 10 is like, there's no joke. This is this is serious business. And I was, even as I was leaving this morning, I was honing in on that gentle as a dove, but as shrewd as a snake. Boy, I, the way I'm wired naturally, I'm a naturally kind of fearful person because that's essentially what people pleasing is, is uh, letting fear, fear of, of what people think of you be how you live your life. Um, and Jesus is saying, st knock it off. Stop. Like, who cares what happens to your body? Your soul is what's important. And your soul will live on um, when you live righteously and for me and for God. Um, so who cares about your body? Like, and then when you're working for me, you will be taken care of. Stop. Like, it's like, stop being afraid. I cannot have people working for me that are straddling that fence of fear and love because they don't coexist. Fear will win out um, almost all the time. And our survival brain and the way that we're wired, that amygdala is strong. It can kick in. We don't have always have a lot of control over it, which is why if you do the work on the front end, with the driving the stake in the ground, being on a mission, on purpose, no matter what, and already kind of going through the mental exercises of, yep, this is going to be tough. This might happen. This might happen. But you're pre-deciding for your brain how you're going to handle those situations. Um, it's already pre-decided. It's pre-laid out. You know it's going to be tough. You accept that it's going to be a tough mission impossible if you accept this mission this is the ultimate mission impossible right but it's not with god i am possible and he doesn't say you might live you're going to live and survive this <laughs> he just said yeah you might die and don't worry don't don't be afraid because you're more than just your body you've got to trust me on this and whatever you do in my name that furthers my name, like you're going to be rewarded in heaven for those that don't, they are going down into, I think it's a Gehenna is the Greek word, which that was a historical place where they, people sacrificed children. Ooh. So basically hell. Um, is what the modern translations refer to it as. 
being on a mission. You have got to be fully decided, fully committed. This is like what soldiers have to go through and part of their basic training and all the rigors that they go through, that they put them through first before they send them out into actual battlefield and why it's so hard and painful because they have to be tested before they go out in the battlefield. And I think as we watched, um, you know, in the fir first few chapters preceding this, that was kind of their training ground. Their boot camp was um, standing up in the face of all the ridicule. He says, "I if, if I'm called the prince of demons, what do you think you're going to be called? <laughs> you're going to be called so much worse than that. So he was preparing them and laying the reality of it on the line of what their human experience would be with other humans and saying, doing it anyway, because this isn't all that what you see here on earth and what this experience is, is only part of the real reality. And when you get tuned into the real reality and start thinking really long term and big picture, what side do you want to be on? <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, but on a practical level now, of course, um, I think believing in Christ, the Christ, Jesus, God, you know, the whole love over fear is the best strategy you can have, and that's worth talking about and being on a mission for. But in our day-to-day -day lives, this is the type of um, paradox that you've got to live out. You've got to have a sense of urgency of being on a mission, like you're all you're all in. Whatever comes your way, you're not getting off the mission. Um, but also not a super big hurry or not no ex false expectations of, OK, in six months, I get to go back to normal life. No, there's no normal life to go back to. This is your new life. This is your new life that you're embracing, doing the hard work, um, being intentional about how you're living. Um, living from a fully conscious, awake place of choosing what is good and right and lovely over fear. Fear, your own fears of not having enough resources, approval, whatever. Like, are you committed enough to stay the course when all the other things seem to be stacked against you on the days when you know, the grumpy teenagers coming out, the grumpy spouse or partner, um, your family is falling apart. <laughs> like all the human stuff is colliding. A pandemic hits. You lose your job. <laughs> um, a lot of people that really have had their lives turned upside down. Um, <laughs> And does even something like that take you off your mission? This is, you know, these are great marching orders. Like, there's, he's not trying to sugarcoat it. A lot of um, people that are selling their programs or their diets or their get rich quick, you know, do this, change your life. They're, those are charlatans. Those are snakes. <laughs> those are, uh, what did he also said? I'm sending you as sheep out into the wolves. These are wolves. Um, don't let the wolves go gobble you up and take you down and deceive you. Um, be shrewd. Be gentle. Be open. Be loving. But be shrewd. Be discerning. Know the difference between a truth and a lie. And that's really hard to do in your own humanness. And what is God? God never changes. So even when you're trying to make a good human change for your human health, your human self, 
And by health, I don't mean just physical health. There's lots of aspects of life that need to be healthy, your spiritual life, your emotional life, your financial life. Like when you are trying to get healthy, um, anybody doesn't like that because he thrives in confusion and being able to easily deceive you with half truths. Um, but when you're connected to the truth, he also says, and if you get in front of these um, judges and these authorities, don't worry about what to say. God's going to, it's not going to be you talking anyway. God will come into that situation because you've done, you've stayed on your mission and gotten him in front of these judges and rulers and people of authority. And he's saying the same thing to us. He's saying the same thing to us. And what do you love more? Do you love God? Do you love fulfilling his potential? Or are you just trying to do it all on your own and fulfill your maybe human potential without God's, you know, uh, super on your natural and being just satisfied with that and being getting all the approval of the people around you? Or are you willing to be looked at and ridiculed for the one that really matters for eternity? It's a uh, good stuff. And he will help you decide where to really put your focus and vision so you don't get caught up in just your human expectations of looking like everybody else and being like everybody else. Um, he didn't create any copycats, and yet we try to go around and, and be copycats to belong. <sighs> Whew, good stuff this morning. All right. Go rise and shine and have a great day. If you're going to rise, you might as well shine for the glory of God. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. And we travel further into Matthew.